whenever you're ready, can you explain what you made? Yeah, so we made a hardware that's trying to solve the Sudoku puzzle. Uh, this is the game, the user interface. Uh, maybe we should s introduce the rule, uh, the rule of the Sudoku puzzle first. So basically, you have a nine times nine grid, and then you are, it's a math problem that you are trying to put the number one to nine in this grid. Uh, there are only one rule in this uh, game, is that for each row, or for each column, or for each square, you can only put number one to nine in, and you cannot have a repetition of numbers. So we build this uh, game, the solver, ba based on this rule. And first, let's start this game. So uh, this is the user interface when you first enter the game. Mm -hmm. uh, before the game, you have to input the puzzle that you want to, uh, that you're trying to solve. So uh, the the interaction is like this: you have a keyboard and have, you have a mouse. Mm -hmm. So whenever you want to put something in a number for uh, in a grid for initialization, you left click the cell and then put number you you have like a one. Neat. Yeah, and then for another cell, you put a number and then like a two. For example, if you don't want this number, you can right click to eliminate this. And then for another cell, like a five, uh, six, three. Suppose this is the puzzle that you want to solve, and then you need to click initialization down, so you initialize the whole puzzle, and then there are two modes you could choose. Either user mode or FPGA mode. User mode is for the user to play the game. Suppose mm -hmm. I want to play the game, so you play, you click user mode, and then you can start to interact with the game or try to solve this. Mm -hmm. For example, I think there should be a six, so you have a different color indicating you are the user trying to play this, or I think uh, maybe I should put a nine here, and then, uh, for example, if you are done with the game or you are bored with solving mm -hmm. it yourself, you can click the FPGA mode and then this data will be sent to the FPGA and the FPGA will solve it. So when you click this, you will see this is wow. the result of the FPGA. Yeah, so you will see the the, the green the green color is the user result, uh, the black is the initialization, and the, the blue-ish uh, is the um, FPGA result. And you have the time of the FPGA on the lower left, on the left. And then you can click restart. Everything will restart. Also, uh, one more trick: if, if for example, uh, when you initialize like two five, mm -hmm. uh, this should not be allowed in this game. So when you click initialization down, uh, in that, when you click FPGA, you will have a, like a reminder that there's a repetition square or repetition in column or row if you do the same. Wow. So and then you, you just click restart. Uh, click like five, uh, change this to a six, and click initialization done, and FPGA mode, and FPGA will solve. Yeah. And so, it'll do it in 236 uh, microseconds? Yeah, case. microseconds. It depends on the difficulty of the uh, Sudoku puzzle, you will see yeah. a different. Yeah. yeah, we actually prepared a very hard uh, Sudoku puzzle that takes a lot of time. We can show this at the end of this Okay, demo. sure. Yeah, maybe they can introduce the hardware part first. Okay. 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 Um. So the algorithm we are using. So there's multiple algorithm for solving some Sudoku, and the algorithm we are using is backtracking algorithm. So it's like we fill in the first cell. Uh, to be for example, if one can fit, we just go for one. Mm -hmm. So, and if one cannot, we increment by one. We'll go for two and try to see it. Just check the rules to see if it fit. If it fits, and we. We uh we keep on to the next cell, but when I'm gonna show you this. Um, so if if different cell is like different layers, we for example, if the third cells we try all of the possibilities and and find out that there's no solution, mm -hmm. we'll trace back to the previous cell and increment by one. So that's. Uh, why it is called backtracking algorithm, and uh, the the way we try to like parallelize it is like we can, for example, for the second layer, which means the second cells, mm -hmm. we can have two possibility, and we just implement two solver that is working on uh, these two possibility at the same time. So that's uh, that's the way. Uh, we chose to like speed it up and and there's advantage of how we that we can check check our rules uh, we have uh, 27 uh, comparators so we can check our rule just within one cycle so that's another uh, way how we par par okay. like optimize it okay. uh, let me introduce the Sudoku solver 
of R. This is our hardware implementation. We have four module. This is the control module, which is uh, imp uh, implementing the control signal, and the updater will update the uh, the value of the Sudoku, Sudoku register, and the Sudoku register will store the value of the Sudoku, and the checker will check the Sudoku's register's value to see that if it's a value to Sudoku. Mm -hmm. um, so first, the HPS will send the Sudoku map to the control unit, and the control unit will update the Sudoku register and the updater. Uh, the updater needs the information that which uh, which uh, where is the empty square so that it can fill it up. Mm -hmm. And after that, updater will update the Sudoku register so uh, using the backtracking algorithm. And the checker will check the Sudoku register if it's a valid Sudoku and send the result to the updater. And the updater will update the Sudoku register ac according to the checker because it has to know that if it's success or failed so it can know how to update the next value. And after that, if the updater update all the sp uh, spare value and a spare square, and the checker check that it's a valid solution, uh, the updater will send the signal to the Sudoku register, and the Sudoku register will send all the value inside the Sudo Sudoku and send it to the HPS. And that's our implementation. Cool, okay. Nice. Really nice. So maybe we can implement the hardest. We find a, like a Sudoku puzzle example that is known as the hardest in the world because oh, it will wow. have one solution. Because most of Sudoku will have many solutions. Our FPGA is like, we will solve one of them because it depends on how we implement the mm -hmm. algorithms. But I think this one, according to the people who invent this, is the hardest because they only have like one solution. Okay. So we when we input this, um, I'll just point out too that these appear to be lovingly generated custom font characters. Yeah, we spent some time on this. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. these are done by the the C file. Yeah, um, they look really nice. So, in the worst case, how many number of operations do you? How many boxes do you have? If, if everything goes as wrong as it can go, and you have to backtrack over and over again, what is the maximum number of numbers you have to write in boxes to solve the puzzle? I think we basically we have um, so so because there are uh, eighty nine uh, grids. In our um, updater, we have uh, two arrays, uh, 81, uh, suppose the size is 81, and then when we send this data, so this will be a zero. We, we will send all the data to the FPGA, and then the, the two array will determine if that's a zero or not. If it's a zero, it will store it, because he know that's, that's the number they're going to put. And then it depends on like how you send it, like, it will have two arrays that store uh, the position of the zero. Yeah, I'm and, not asking for the method. Uh -huh. I just want to know mathematically, yeah. How is the how what is the maximum number of of number writing operations you need to do for the hardest possible puzzle? Oh, that. Well, yeah. Sorry. I think it depends on different cases. For example, if we have cell one, it has three possibilities, and and like for each possibility, the next level will have different numbers of possibilities. Mm -hmm. So that really depends on the cases we have here. But there's got to be a worst case. Worst case, maybe like. I think our algorithm goes backwards from here to there. So suppose your puzzle only have one solution, and the the solution is nine, eight, seven, six, five, like in this order. We will start with one here. So we will calculate many times, and then find one is wrong, and then right. two, three, well, nine. Know. So how, what's the worst case? So will be, I don't know, like nine factorial times something. Definitely have a factorial in it and times the grid size. We, did, we didn't know this answer, but it would be... Okay, a, well, that'd be an interesting thing to look up. Okay. I'll bet somebody's done that. Okay, okay, okay. So let's see. So let's yeah, see. so this is the hardest. I think the answer is nine here. So, uh, but if you put like a one, so let's... Maybe we should put a nine, like suppose this is initialization done. Uh-huh. Uh, maybe let's let the FEG solve it. Okay, so the FEG solve it. You see the time is... Um, 
wow. 34 yeah. uh, thousand millisecond. And what happens if if you put a one here? Basically, because th this is the only solution. If right. you put one here, nothing will show up, and the FPGA, uh, the 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 C will tell you I cannot solve the problem. Because we'll receive a signal from yeah. FPGA saying I cannot solve the problem, and we'll print it out. Wow. Yeah. So 34 milliseconds. Okay. So another way of asking this is, how many how many number entries can you do per second? How fast is the solver clock running? I think the software is 50, 50 megahertz. Yeah. So this could be as high as uh, 340 times 50 then. Operations. Which is. Um, um, uh, <laughs> 375, uh, uh, 1750. That's incredibly impressive. Incredibly impressive. So, do you, you were mentioning your parallelization mechanism of sort of exploring multiple branches here simultaneously. Yeah. Yeah. Do you explore two simultaneously? Uh, we, we implemented two solver, one mm -hmm. for like uh, the second cell for one for second cell one. Okay. And this the speed is actually different depends on different cases. So yeah, sure. Yeah. Really nice. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks. Really Thank cool you. demo.